you probably at wonder why do white people pay so much attention to black people if they don't like them notice the things you ignore go away and i know it seems like a big deal but did you realize the only occult science secret society science magic that the white man is actually doing to you is just keeping you distracted He's just keeping you, that's it. That's the sum total of it. You would think if you didn't like something, why would right. you be paying attention to it? I don't pay attention to things I don't like. What's the answer? The answer is the liar knows what lie he told. You see what I'm saying? So even if I made it deceitful and I made you think that the answer is over here, but the answer is really over here, I'm still going to be looking over here. Me, the one that tricked, because I know this is the right answer. Black people have lost their identity, but our oppressors have not lost our identity. <sighs> That's just why they chopped those noses off of the Pharaoh and the Sphinx in Egypt in the first place. Is because without this nose, we can tell you this is whoever it is. But with that n knows it can only be n why would somebody vandalize a whole face and only vandalize one part nobody wanted to knock an eye off or take an ear off or no chins missing no nope, just the nose because it's a brand the only reason that white people in the united states or anywhere we are in europe in africa in australia in Israel, wherever we are, we are the colonizers. We are the colonizers. And we live off the expense of the assault, Europe's assault on Africa, the kidnapping of African human beings, the trafficking, the, all of these things that we hear today. This is where it came from. Hundreds of years of assaulting and stealing everything that African people and Africa as a continent had and putting it into the hands of white people. And so this is why, as the chairman has said, the true class struggle, the true working class in the world is the African and colonized working class, yes. not white people, because all white people, and you know this is true, you and I know this is true, by just living our lives and seeing it, all white people sit on the pedestal on the backs of African and indigenous people. And, you know, the, the statistics are that even poor white people have an easier ability in a crisis to raise $3,000 in an emergency than middle-class African people do yep. because we live in social wealth. Because only the truth can set us free. That's just the truth. One day, black people are going to have to look back on our history and we're going to have to say, we were fucking crackheads. As embarrassing as that is, we went from building pyramids at one point in time to smoking crack. I don't know how that happened fully, but it happened. We're going to have to tell her it hurt, but we got to say that. The good and the bad. Because I'm going to tell the good and the bad. I'm going to let niggas know, yeah, our ancestors did all of this great shit, and then some way, somehow, you niggas started gangbanging, twerking, sucking cucumbers, listening to fucking celebrities, and you just fucked your life away. So I'm going to keep it real with my people. I just hope that white people keep it real with their people. And one day, white people are going to have to say, we're not the hero people we think we are. We're not the civilizing people we think we are. We're conquesting, oh, excuse me, not, we, we were conquesting, colonizing terrorists. That's true. Hey, King. Yeah, you, big dog, I'm talking to you. You know you an amazing, wanted, needed motherfucking hen. You know that the world would not be the same without you in it. You know you loved and desired and admired. You know you can do anything you put your mind to as long as your booty head ass do not give up. You know you gonna have a great motherfucking day, right? 
You know that one thing you've been working towards and wishing on? It's right there. Just don't give up. You got to keep pushing at it, but it's right there. You got it. It's right there. You know them people don't give a fuck, so you got to be the best version of you for who? For you. You know I'm proud of you, right? You know you could have quit a long time ago, but you didn't. That's, that's some shit. I like that. I like that. You know you're the best thing that ever happened to the people around you, King. If you didn't, then now you do. That's why Africans are repressed. But let me tell you the reason why. Is I say, when I say that you are the most powerful beings, you are the most powerful beings. You have to understand that you were like the first people to bring in advanced technology. You were the owners and creators of Atlantis. Okay? You people helped create advanced technology that these supposedly reptilians invented. They didn't invent shit. Okay? And the Arcturians, they didn't invent shit either. All of you fucking melanated fucking gods, you invented that shit. Okay? And you see what happened is that you egypt like so in ancient egypt africa this is that's fucking atlantis you guys were the owners of that okay you did not live with like yeah that's beautiful too like later on in other parts of africa where you guys have your ancient stuff but i'm talking advanced technology that you had here okay and you have to understand that the reason why you are so repressed is because aliens were interested and how advanced you were they wanted to fuck you up because you were so powerful and they took you off your throne and they fu- I was I was wondering about who's gonna come back down to earth so can be your daughter oh that's what happened? Mm -hmm. oh okay <laughs> that's when we started to have the first interbreeding occurring that led to blue eyed white skinned people um, the only people that actually seem to have been generated by the Earth's own evolution is black people. Those are the only racial types that we have on Earth that you don't see in people that come from other planets. And that makes them very special. Take the book for them because you can read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, 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 not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And, I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener. Like I. I'm saying, so I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm, How probably, do you I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. Sure. Uh. R. What? Was. Two. Two. Light. Light. May. May. There you go with that crazy stuff again. I can't move the paper with my mind. How you gonna move the paper with your mind, London? But I can move it with my mind. Let me see, cause I, don't, I think you're tripping. You're not doing. What the hell? You're not doing that. You are not doing. Oh. <laughs> she is not doing <laughs> Oh my baby Oh that's scary Why are people so afraid of Farrakhan? <clears throat> well, if you had the ability to control the black people on this planet, there isn't anything that you couldn't take 
dismantle, destroy, or interrupt if you could mobilize black people. And so part of the ops agenda, a part of their modus operandi, is to find out which one of you niggas is a potential leader. And if you are, then we begin a work of progress on your life, which will make people get off of that. Um, it's a part of it, as much as in any defense, you're trying to figure out which way this dude is likely to go so I can rip that ball. It, it's the same. Farrakhan is a polarizing individual. A lot of people yes. really, I do believe, don't really understand him. I, I think that there are people who get the message this is what frightens them is because they know as you alluded to they they are they know his what he's capable of doing you know uniting black people and guiding and leading black people in the right in the right way there's not been a successful one of those yet so just like if you're a rapper any rapper can get hit we can go through 300 years of history and look for all the black people that fit the description you just said they never make it. Yeah. Which is why I believe that they should stop trying to make it. I really do believe that, you know, it's each one, reach one, teach one, but the leadership is in yourself. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I want to let black people know. I'm talking specifically to my people. Fuck some of our people. That's just what it is. Harriet Tubman said she would have freed, she freed thousands of slaves, but she would have freed even more thousands if they knew they were slaves. Let these niggas follow these entertainers into the abyss. Stop trying to wake these niggas up. See, the way the universe works is you attract your A alike. See how that works? People who think like you, you attract. So you got to stop trying to go somewhere that is not on your frequency. Everybody that's on our frequency is attracted. We attracted each other. Learn how the universe works. The universe attracts objects. It doesn't go find objects. That's how gravity works and electromagnetics works. Study electromagnetism. But that being said, the law of attraction is real. And your, and your electromagnetic field is created by your heart, a.k.a. your heart chakra. And so the frequency of your heart is going to determine the frequency of the objects, entities, and entities that you attract. And so all of our heart chakras are righteous. And that is why we are all attracted to each other. Stop trying to talk to motherfuckers that's unrighteous because your, your heart talks to your brain. I did a whole video on this and I'm going to end right here. It's called neurocardiology. You have neurons and brain tissue in your heart. Your heart can not only remember, it can think. And so your heart talks to your brain and your brain talks to your body through your nervous system. So all in order to change your mind, you got to change the way you feel. You got to change your heart. Y'all are trying to change people's minds without changing the way they feel. Our people don't love themselves. So there's no amount of information you can give them that will change them until they change their own heart. So stop trying to wake these demonic motherfuckers up. You have to re realize some of these people don't realize they living in hell because they feel like they're living in home. Huh? Let me say that again. Some people don't realize they're in hell because they feel they think they're at home because they're demons. So you woke up and you like, damn, I'm in hell. I got to get out. They woke up and they like, oh, I'm a demon and this is right up my alley. And they flapping their demon bat wings and flying around. And you sitting here talking about, nigga, take the demon wings off and let's go over here and be righteous. Nah, let them niggas flap their motherfucking wings in hell. We about to get the fuck out of here. I'm letting y'all know this is the, this is the, I'm about to pull out. I'm about to make it the exodus. And, and I'm going to bring my people out of, out of there. And for those of you that want to stay, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not uh, fighting with you. I'm not trying to convince you of shit. I'm not coming to your door like a Jehovah's Witness. Have fun. Like all of us are capable. Well, not all of us, but many of us are capable of being a leader. Like instead of sitting around just waiting on one person to be that leader. You know, how well, about... Well, well said. Well yeah. said. But in real time, being the leader of yourself gets you nothing. Um, the people demand to be led regardless. Um, there's not 13 shepherds and all these sheep. Why? Because it's unnecessary. Just one. Just one that has the connection with the sheep 
which allows the sheep who has a brain about that small to be able to just focus on eating grass and not worry about falling off a cliff. We have the desire as humans to be led. We want to be led into battle. We want to be led into the football game. We this is all because this is how we are wired. The cheerleaders and the pomp and circumstance. That goes back to the times of first humanity because we, we do need that. Yeah. Well, you're talking about a myriad of leaders. You're not just talking about a single individual. Right. And I see a lot of people just be sitting back waiting on a messiah. They're waiting on right. that one person. And, but they are too, though. Who's that? The other side is far more diligent about looking for that Messiah than we are because they know where to look. You probably wonder, why do white people pay so much attention to black people if they don't like them? You would think if you didn't like something, why would you right. be paying attention to it? I don't pay attention to things I don't like. What's the answer? The answer is the liar knows what lie he told. You see what I'm saying? So even if I made it deceitful and I made you think that the answer is over here, but the answer is really over here, I'm still going to be looking over here. Me, the one that tricked, because I know this is the right answer. Let me tell you something. Not only will they persecute you, they'll lie on you. They'll fabricate lies. They'll imprison you and create cases around you. The same way they tried to defame the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and then they tried to defame Malcolm X, and then they even, and they even tried to defame Dr. Martin Luther King by some secretary. That's what they'll do. They'll imprison you, and then they'll create lies to turn your own people against you. They'll persecute you after righteous same thing. The same way I'm talking to you, they're going to come after me eventually. Believe it. They're going to say, that man is too dangerous. I don't like him. Let's make some lies up on him. Let's turn his people against him. Let's imprison him. And if we can, let's kill him because his people won't help him anyway. And they'll try it. And I'll be at the mercy of the devil because people say, well, won't Allah step in and help you? And I say, did he step in and help John the Baptist? And the answer would be no. <laughs> he will not intervene at that point. You understand? The government of America knows that whenever a people have been oppressed and suppressed and denied basic rights, freedom, justice, and equality, which are the essentials of life, they know that the longer we are deprived, the greater will be the leader that comes to answer that deprivation. So they were watching to see who that leader was. They were looking for the Messiah, just like Pharaoh was looking for the birth of a deliverer, and just like Herod was looking for the Messiah. The other side is far more diligent about looking for that Messiah than we are. Our counterintelligence program must prevent the rise of a black messiah. That's what the counterintelligence program of J. Edgar Hoover and the government of the United States was all about. Well, wait a minute, J. Edgar. Why do you want to stop the birth of a messiah? Why would you use a religious term? It's because they knew that the messiah was to come up among you. They knew that the Jesus you would be looking for would be one of your own people. Black people have lost their identity, but our oppressors have not lost our identity. <sighs> That's just why they chop those noses off of the Pharaoh and the Sphinx in Egypt in the first place. Is because without this nose, we can tell you this is whoever it is. But with that nigga nose, it can only be niggas. Why would somebody vandalize a whole face and only vandalize one part? Nobody wanted to knock an eye off or take an ear off or no chins missing. No, nope, just the nose. Because it's a brand. It's a brand. <laughs>